Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're having a great and wonderful day. And it seems that uh, Pixar's not very happy. And they are um, looking into a way of, you know, they saying that maybe they, they've gone the wrong way. Maybe they have not really done a good job in succeeding into what they wanted to do. So they are changing the... They're changing things and even blaming Disney for the most part, which I would somewhat agree, but again, you have to take responsibility for yourself as well. You allow this stuff to go through and then all this happens. So what we have here is from Bounty Comics, or Bounty Into Comics, my apologies. Uh, report, Pixar chief Pete Doctor believes the company has drifted too far from its storytelling roots. A uh, new report details that Pixar chief Doctor believes the animation company has drifted too far from its storytelling roots. The, described, uh, the New York Times' Brooks Barnes described a Zoom interview he conducted with Doctor uh, 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 that primarily revolved around the failure of Elemental that Disney is now attempting to spin as a success given the movie had longer legs at the box office than initially expected. According to the numbers, Pixar's latest animated release, Elemental, only grossed $29.6 in its opening weekend at the domestic box office. However, the film went on to earn $144.4 million at the domestic box office in its entire theatrical run. It added on another $233.7 million inter in internationally, predominantly in South Korea, for a global gross of $488 million. However, given the film's estimated $200 million production budget, the movie needed to hit at least $500 million to break even after you factor in the movie's marketing budget as well as the office box office split that theater state. According to Barnes, Dr. placed the blame on the Walt Disney executives who moved Pixar films from theatrical releases to Disney Plus releases. Barnes detail for a to start said Disney had an undercut Pixar as a big screen force by using his films to build the Disney Plus streaming service. He reportedly pointed to Soul Turning Red and Luca all being released on Disney Plus instead of getting theatrical releases. I think the bigger problem here is that even if they were released theatrically and what have you, I still don't think they would have performed well. Um, I think Disney is putting some of these movies on Disney Plus because they do not want the international and public backfire or failure uh, slash disgrace from other movies performing horribly. And that's just the reality of things, right? When we know that these woke movies are going to fail, and we've seen them fail time and time again, where they just do not do well. They fail miserably, and then it looks really bad on Disney, and it makes other people like advertisers and people like that not wanting to put these, not want to stay with Disney. And as we already noticed before, Disney is, look, uh, Disney, uh, by Chapek, I may believe, no, 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 not him, but, uh, Bob Eager uh, is one of the ones that are looking to do things with Disney that uh, would not relate to them, you know, uh, having to look for elsewhere, selling their assets, because they're not doing well. Um, Dr. claims that his change shifted the way viewers look at Pixar films. There has been an overall shift in viewing habits as a result of the pandemic, but it's also specific to Disney+. Plus. We told people, hey, all this is going to be available to you on Disney+. Plus." Not only did Doctor claim that Disney executives have screwed the pooch by putting Pixar films on Disney+, Plus, but he did take some of the blame himself with Barnes stating, although not saying, say, saying so, directly Dr. Mr. Star Doctor also indicated that Pixar had perhaps drifted too far from storytelling roots. To that point, Doctor said, I've always, had, I always felt that Elemental would speak to a lot of people, and I'm, I'm so happy it has. It really hasn't, but okay. But we have also taken another look at the projects we're working on now. What what are the kinds of films we want to be making? I really think I want to double down on what allowed us to speak to audience speak to begin with. I don't think you're talking to a lot of people when you lose fifty million on a film and initially you thought you were gonna lose around two hundred to three hundred plus million on the release. So I don't think that's speaking to a lot of people. Um, I, I same thing to where you people are automatically were going after uh, the Sound of Freedom, and that still, despite your greatest efforts, still did really in the really well in the box office. Where Disney, where Amazon, and even Disney and other places were not trying to allow this film to be shown. Yet it still, despite your expectation, despite what you guys were doing, still did remarkably well. That is showing where it's reaching a greater audience. You, on the other hand, had all have all this publicity and stuff like that to allow to put out anything and you still fail to make 50 million. Sound of Freedom made way more money than it was ever supposed to actually make or be estimated to make. But you guys failed at 50 million even though you're being a huge company. You have to think of that before you even think, oh, well, this is the point. And yes, it's also your fault. You shouldn't have let this movie ever be released at all, period. 
Dockett made similar comments in an interview with Variety back in June. He told the outlet, we made Soul for the big screen. We looked at every, at every frame. There's so much detail and gorgeous imagery and work that was done that you can't quite appreciate on a smaller screen. However, there was a pandemic going on. On one hand, we are so thankful that it was Disney Plus that, that, so that we could release the film and could see it. Otherwise, it would just sit on a shelf for a year and a half. In the long run, there's been a bit of mixed feeling, blessing because we've trained audiences that these films will be available for you on Disney Plus, and it's more expensive for a family of four to go to a theater when they know they can wait and it'll come on the platform, he said. I would agree with to some extent to that, that maybe some people do not want to go to theaters and, you know, um, uh, watch stuff and just watch on Disney Plus, but at the same time, Disney Plus is also just not doing well. Disney Plus is also collapsing and... Due to more of what Disney is going to do for the platform in itself with Disney Plus, it's going to lose even more. So I don't think that this is this is going to be necessarily the case. People will still go to the theaters to support a film that they actually want to go and see. We've seen this time and time again here. You're just making garbage. The author added, we're trying to make sure people realize there's a great deal you're missing by not seeing it on the big screen. In the, in the case of Elemental, it's a beautiful spectacle. There's detail everywhere. I think you feel it more, and it's a, and it's a bit better experience. Uh, there's the shared experience as well that you get to see it in a room with strangers and there's something about the energy that comes from other people that makes the whole experience more vibrant and interesting, he concluded. Yes and no. It depends. I don't normally care with strangers. I normally want to go see it with friends. When I go and take people, I see it with friends, not with strangers. When It, it makes it better, I guess, in a sense, when you have a group of people, when you, people are clapping or cheering for certain things that are happening in a movie that maybe make a certain experience. But that's not every single movie. And that's not... And that if I've honestly only seen that with very high end up movies like Star Wars or the Marvel series or stuff like that that were actually good where people actually fan or just cheer or clap or etc. I don't see this in other run to mill movies. So you that's a very rare experience when people actually have stuff that like that happen. Entertainment analyst and commentator Yellow Flash re 2 reacted to Dr. comments saying, You can blame Disney for some of the problems when it comes to what's been going on with Pixar. I'm sure Disney man mandated that they need to s s tell certain kinds of stories and that need to include to certain kind of material. However, it's Pixar that got right to the story that and make the film. They can choose to find ways to make all of these things entertaining and they don't, he asserted. Pixar lately would rather tell you a story about ideology than entertain you, and that's part of the reason we've they fallen so far into a hole. Yeah, exactly. These are more or more they're more focus on teaching kids ideology uh, and all this crazy stuff where parents just don't want to see it. And we're seeing that happen throughout this year. We have this. Pixar Chief slams Disney Plus for Elemental's poor opening weekend box office. Uh, we have this. Elemental was close to being one of its biggest flaws in 2023 and one of Pixar's biggest stumbles in its entire history. Fortunately, the film managed to reverse the performance it had during its opening weekend, exponentially improving its numbers. However, the situation of the latest Pixar releases is not good, and for Pixar boss Peter Doctor, it is all the fault of Disney+. Plus. Of the, last play, of the last six projects from the studio that first surprised the world with Toy Story in 1984, have had their premiere exclusively on Disney+, Plus due to the pandemic. But Lightyear, which was Merrick Pixar's return to the big screen after Soul, Luca, and Turning Red, was a huge flop. Not only because it grossed less than expected, despite having been one of the most successful animated films of 2022, but because of being part of the franchise as successful as Toy Story, not a not, no one imagined that it would perform so poorly. Yeah, understandable. But again, like saying that you know, like your your movie was the best selling animated story among garbage is it doesn't change the fact that it was still garbage. So you had garbage competing against garbage and that's all there is to it. So that's not saying much. But again, yeah, he's saying that he's blaming um he's blaming Pixar for its bad performances. Well, I I agree in some extent, but also you're the CEO, you're the head guy, you're the chief. So you need to say what yes or no, what is to what is allowed into your movies and what you would say press go and you're allowing this stuff to happen so yeah disney is not uh this picture's not doing good they want to reverse course and i can't really blame them because everything that they've been doing so far has been absolutely garbage out of the first weekend in theaters it seemed that elemental was going to follow the same path even though it had received very good comments before its debut to everyone's surprise the weeks passed and the film improved its performance significantly and ended its theatrical run as the 12th highest grossing film of 2023 but those first weeks presented a horrible pic picture for pixar and its future the studio's next two films already have been released have a release date and will arrive in theaters first along before the, their debut on disney plus as was initially planned to do done to be done with all the company's major pro, uh, franchise projects so yeah 
uh, we'll see how this goes. But I don't see how anything is going to be remotely well when they have when they're going to be producing woke. But they may reverse course, and we have to wait and see. All right, guys, that's it for video. Or I'm just gonna share. As always, take care. I'm disgusted by what I see in public. Even people closest to us can't be trusted because it's algorithmic disease. The social media.